Hi, thank you very much for joining me today. And today's project, I'm going to show you how to create a quite an abstract seascape using palette knives and acrylic paints. I'm excited because I've actually just bought a new paper, which I hadn't realised when I picked it up was actually a mixed media paper. It's the Strathmore grey paper, which is usable with lots of different mediums. So I had a little play yesterday and this was what I managed to create using acrylic paints. And it's very versatile paper. This is a tiny picture, about five and a half inches. This paper is about eight inches, so I've sort of gone up in size to show you this one. And it's versatile because you can use it with different media. This one I did with just straightforward soft pastels. And another one I actually did a little watercolour base first and then used pastels on the top. And then this was the little acrylics that I did. So that was what inspired me to today's project. So I'm just going to start by using my medium sized palette knife with some Prussian blue. Just caught a little bit of black there, sorry Payne's grey, but I'm not bothered about that because I'm just going to push the paint onto the paper, mixing it with some white and I will give you the colours in the comments as usual, but the Prussian blue and the white mixed together to make a really nice blue and I'm mixing them on the paper. I was very dubious whether the paper would stand a lot of the moisture, but actually it's worked really well. So you can sort of scrub the colours together, get them to blend and push them about. It will dry fairly quickly on the paper. It's not like using a canvas. So just be aware that it does dry quite quickly. And I'm using one of the Liquitex uh, turquoise colours, which is absolutely gorgeous and mixed with the a Liquitex white, which is a really good white. You can get some beautiful colours going on. I speeded this up a little bit so you didn't get too bogged down watching me create a sky. And I've mixed quite a lot of white with the turquoise here as it comes down towards the horizon level. It just gets a little bit paler and I'm just going to blend all these colours together. I'm not actually mixing it too much because I want some of the gaps to show through. I want the paper to actually show it's such a nice shade of grey, but here I'm adding a little, tiny, tiny little bit of blush pink because the sky quite often has a little bit of that pink shade in it and it just adds a little bit of warmth to the blue. And again, mixed with the white, the Liquitex white, which is a particularly good white. This is titanium white and it just adds lots of sort of clouds, little bits of detail and it builds it up. I speed up a little bit here for you, just keeping going, adding a little bit of the grey, a little bit of Payne's grey, a little bit of more of the blue. Mix your colours to the way you want them. I've gone down to a smaller palette knife here. This is my smallest knife because I want to start just filling in some of the gaps in between and just creating a nice sort of mixture of levels in the sky. And sometimes that's hard to do with a, a slightly larger knife. So use the size that is appropriate for what you're doing. And this is my long knife. And what I'm going to do here is just run it through that grey mix and just give myself a little hint of a horizon line. I'm not drawing it in as such. I'm just giving myself a rough guide because I don't want to take the sky below that line. I just want to keep working and this is going to create a little bit of landscape. This is a bit of a mountain, if you like. And as you can see, all I've done was just dip the pen, uh, the pen, the knife into the paint and just pull it into the shapes. Don't worry too much if you don't like the shape because you can go over it with paint and reapply. But it just gives you a little focus of something that you might feel is on the horizon. Just adding a little bit of white, a little bit more grey, take that out to the edge. We can add a little bit more white later and make it look as if it's snowy on those mountains if we want to. You can use all parts of the palette knife, which is really good. You can use the flat, you can use the edge, you can push, you can pull. You can use the very tip just to add bits of colour. I work from the top down because I don't want my 
sleeves, my elbows getting covered in paint if I work at the bottom. Now I'm going to go in with an acrylic brush. I want to bring some more colour down around those mountains, but I don't want to use the palette knife at this point because I'm likely to cover up what I've just done. So I'm going to take that down just about to that horizon line and just start pulling the colour across and blending that little bit in. Using the brush means I can add little bits of grey here and there. And then I'm using the rounded palette knife. I find this a very useful knife. It's um, going to come in useful later for the foreground, you'll see. But it, it just seems to blend quite nicely. And because you've got that curved end, it makes curved shapes. So it's very useful. Again, just adding in that white. You can see how lovely that white is, that really white titanium white. I don't know about anybody else, but at the moment I'm struggling to get really good quality titanium white paint. It's all coming out like zinc mixing paint. And I'm wondering if the price of titanium has gone up and they've actually cut the amount that they're putting in it. Again, using a very small brush here, just taking that colour down around those mountains, if you like. That's just filling in really nicely. I'm just bringing that sky nicely down to those mountain tops. Much easier with a little brush. And I'm just going to bring that as well down to the horizon line as well, because we want that to sort of melt into the sea. Apologies for the different changing in light, but today in the UK, here where I am, we've had sunshine and cloud, and it's just the worst for filming, so I've had to put the light on. I do apologise. Now a nice mixture of that blue with the bit of the paints grey and white, just to create a little bit of the horizon sea. Just taking some of that white across as well. Just lighten that edge under those mountains. I'm going to call them mountains for now. And then we can just keep mixing and just keep adding. If you use the knife sideways like this, it's a lot easier to cover the ground, but you can also pull it downwards like I've just done. I could have mixed a lot of this colour. Um, because knowing I was going to use it, but I like to mix on the paper as it goes. I find it's much more spontaneous. A little bit of black there, so I'm going to pull that across. And this paper is so versatile, it even takes pulling with a knife. And blending those colours together actually works really well now. I think it looks quite effective. I'm just going to add a little more white and start adding some ripples, little lines. I think we all know what the sea looks like, it's just remembering it. That's pulling that across. Obviously we've got some white on there which actually looks a little bit like sparkles. And now I'm just going to go in with the Payne's Grey which I've actually mixed in with a little bit of the umber that I'm using. There's a nice brown Liquitex uh, umber. And again it just adds a little bit of rock shade to it. Well, some detail. Using the edge of the knife is really useful because you can get a quite a straight line and then using the knife sideways. Now that's a little bit of a mishap. I've managed to get some of the turquoise onto the knife at the same time. Not to worry, we'll pull it across, we'll move it into different areas and I'm just going to use a slightly broader brush now and because the paint is still wet I'm just going to blend it in. It's not going to be a problem at all. It's still in the colours that we're using, so that's going to be fine. And we can just literally pull that across. It's such a pretty colour anyway. It wouldn't really matter if it stayed, but I will blend that in. And you can see I'm starting to pull that across. This is a flat brush, so I'm moving it side to side. We'll give that a clean before we carry on. It means you can uh, keep sort of flat lines as well. There we go, we'll spread that out. Got another little rocky outcrop there. And we lose that little bit of turquoise, but it doesn't matter. Remember, we're building this as we go. This is a real exercise in working loose because we haven't got a drawing. We're not working from anything that we have to make something look like. This is purely imaginative. And it's just exploring what the paper will do, what paint and the knives will do, and seeing what we create. 
And to be honest, even if you went no further and you just cut that where we've just got to, it would still look like a really good picture. It would be small, sort of letterbox size, very attractive. Look, pull some of that colour sideways, a little bit more white, and we start to keep blending that in. But the turquoise, a little bit of the Prussian blue, and to add some distant sort of colour into that sea. Remember that this is going to dry slightly darker. So if you think you've got just the right colour, you might want to add a little bit of paler colour to it just to tone it a little bit lighter. This really is just a fun exercise. But I hope you can see how well this paper is performing. It's not being a problem at all. It's not even cockling, considering that there is actually moisture in this acrylic paint. It's staying very flat. Now we start to pull some of that colour across and down. Always working side to side because that's the way our horizon line is. And it makes it easier. If we work downwards, it's very tricky when area is dry to then start to blend in. And that's some of that umber again. We mix with the Payne's Grey. And can you see here, I'm actually using the curve of the palette knife just to apply to the tops to give them a curved shape. You've got the tool, so you might as well use it that way. It's very helpful. That's using the, the end of the knife, we can spread the paint along. Put a little bit of light colour on there. Using the small palette knife again. And again, just adding little bits of highlights to those rocks. We can go in and add more detail later. At this point, we're getting sort of the rough areas blocked in. We're getting an idea of how our beach is going to look. So we don't need to be too worried just at this point. And as I said earlier, if you choose to leave pieces of the paper showing because it's the grey, it does almost look like a beach anyway. So you're very, very welcome to do that. Don't feel that you have to cover every little piece of paper. Just adding a little bit more rock detail. And now over this side. I have a tendency to work on the left hand side and forget the right hand side, so I have to make myself do that. There we go. And as you can see, we're just coming further forwards. Every time we apply a detail, it's actually moving that towards us and the mountains are getting pushed further and further away. I'm going to pull a little bit of that rock down there using the tip of the knife. It's a sort of nice squiggly pattern. Don't forget to get the rocks at the side. It's very easy to miss them. I know it's going to be trimmed, but now I'm going to leave this to dry and we'll come back to it and have a look at it later. That's dried really nicely. Because we're working on paper it's dried very well and it's still lowly and flat to work on. So I'm mixing up a little bit of buff titanium with some raw sienna because I want to start working on the beach now. Back with my longer knife here. So I'm just now going to pull that mixture across there. It makes a really lovely sort of colour. And remember that the sand nearest to the sea is actually darker. Um, it gets lighter as it's sort of higher up the beach. So I'm just going to spread that along. I can mix that down and put a little bit more light to it. We want to make it sort of realistic, but enough that we know it's a beach. So I'm not going to worry too much. We've got the start of that going on now. So we'll just carry on smoothing that out. And again, I'm going to bring some more of the sort of blues, a little bit of turquoise as if there were little rock pools. Anything that feels like a beach colour to you, you can put into this painting. In actual fact, there's only really blue, white, grey and the sort of brown colours. So it's quite a limited palette, even though we've got a variety of colours to mix. 
and again all of these layers one on top of the other just go to make the whole painting a little bit of that lovely brown colour there might be rocks, it might just be a dark area of sand and we'll match it on that other side as well and pull those rocks across and a little bit of speeded up action there just adding some little bits of detail some more lines of colour it's only when you step back a little bit and things have dried and then you have another look that you can see what you want to just add or change Some little lines, little bits of detail here and there. Just make it look more realistic. And in the foreground I'm adding some white. Perhaps that's where the sea is coming to. Pull it up a little bit. We've still got those sort of ripples that a sea makes, the, the little wavelets as they hit the sand. And it also reflects the sky as well. A little bit hard to tell because it's so pale but actually I'm adding some of that lovely pink colour into the sea just to reflect what we've got going up on in the sky just picking up that little tiny bit of blush pink I might even put some on the top of the mountains as well it's going to be mixing with white so it's not going to look too too pink we just want to add some little bits of interest and detail now we're moving quite well into this foreground area so I'm going to use sort of almost the pure buff titanium and a little bit of white just to pale this up a little bit. We want this to be sort of the lightest area. Okay, bring some more of that raw sienna forward blending it with that lovely buff titanium and the white. There we go we can spread that in quite nicely and pulling it in, mixing it in on as it's wet on the paper Now bring in some of that raw sienna mixed with a really tiny little bit of the umber just in those little areas just to look like little bits of rock it's not quite as dark just adding a little bit of warmth and interest into different parts of that foreground there we go that works quite nicely Now with the small palette knife, just adding some of those highlights onto those rocks. Just picking out some little bits of detail perhaps. Just adds a little bit of realism, a sense of how the light is falling. Now using that knife that I showed you earlier, I'm just applying a good thick layer of sap green and the umber just mixed together and I'm just literally just putting it on wherever I feel. There's a little bit of light green that's just going to go in there and now I'm just going to push upwards with the side of that knife because what happens is it takes the paint up and it also cuts it out as well. It makes little white lines in the foreground adding a little bit of the pale green as well. We want this to be sort of looking over the edge of that sort of cliff or headland or whatever onto our lovely beach. So that just adds the extra details and it brings the eye to the foreground of your painting and finishes it off. Okay, so here we are. As you can see, it's completely dry and I've added a few little bits and pieces here and there. I brought the colour of the sky down a little bit and just added in a little bit more cloud and a little more blue and I've also put some longer grasses here in the foreground because I just felt they were a little bit all at the same height but I've added some little bits of pink in as well. I'm really quite pleased and I hope that that will inspire you to try having a go on paper and I will look forward to you seeing you for the next project.
Keep painting, have fun. Bye for now.